What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are bringing another holster into the fold and this one is the Ronin 3.0 from LAS Concealment. Now I have worn a bunch of holsters throughout my life and I have tested a bunch of them over the past couple years for doing the YouTube thing. And speaking of the YouTube thing, huge thank you to all of you out there. The channel is growing pretty good now. Every comment, every like, every subscription helps a ton. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button, turn those bell notification icons on. I really do appreciate it. Now when talking about holsters, specifically like one like this, where you're gonna spend anywhere from, I don't know, 90 to maybe like 130, 140 bucks on some of them. I got a comment a while back on that holster showdown video, which I'll leave a link down below for you, which goes through all of the kind of nicer holsters that I have. Somebody said, well, this is just too long. I'm like, well, I'm trying to get the best information to people at every level. Not everybody may be like you and may have a ton of experience and not everybody has any experience at all. And I want to provide them the best information that I can so they can make an informed decision when they're about to spend $100 plus of their hard-earned money. And also a huge thank you to LAS Concealment for sending this to the channel so I could take a look at it and compare it to some of those others. So what are the things that we're going to be basing this holster review on so you guys have an understanding right up front? Now those other things we're going to be talking about are the quality, the hardware, and the overall design. Now the quality of the holster, what I'm talking about is fit and finish. The hardware is what are they using as far as like maybe those kind of rivet, the eyelet rivets, screws, backers, anything like that. And then that overall design. For those of you that don't know, when it comes to molding a Kydex holster like this, there are a couple of different ways to do it. You can basically stick it in a press with some foam and press fit it, or you can do a vacuum mold, which is what this is right here. So in my experience, the ones that are vacuum molded, are typically far tighter and just much more clean looking than ones that are pressure fit with say a you know some form of press and foam. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into this Ronin 3.0 from LAS Concealment. But before we do, make sure you do all of those things. And the things are subscribe to the channel, turn that bell notification icon on, and then of course leave a comment down below on what your holster preferences are. But we're gonna go ahead and jump into this thing and check it out right now. All right, we're going to jump into this Ronin 3.0 here, which you can obviously tell is for my gray Gen 5 19. I love this thing. Came out looking perfect. Now, if you have a TLR7, because I keep getting questions, the TLR7A will fit in the same holster. If you already have one for a TLR7, the A with the flex pads will work. So obviously we can tell this is that kind of, you know, sidecar style design flexible because it's got that shot cord in there with a tension button right there. Good design, fits well, slim design, overall great. It's minimal. There's not additional kydex hanging off the edges or anything like that. That's good. Let's talk about that kydex quality. Same quality and thickness that you would expect out of any name brand at the level of LAS concealment. Very good design overall. You've got kind of that open mouth design right there for the uh, pistol and the spare magazine, which allows for ease of holstering. And on holstering, you can see that it fits very well around the controls and is designed and thought out quite well. Now, a lot of people ask, does it lock in? So take a listen, you will hear it lock. That's the retention. So they've done a really good job right there. You can see that divot in there. That's actually where your retention comes from and it's fitting in this gap right here to lock that bad boy in there. Other holster styles like this are kind of just compression fit. And let's talk about the hardware and then we'll move into everything else and how it's finished. So as you can see here, they have done a very nice job finishing off that Kydex, sanding it down, polishing it, which is what I look for and what I expect. All of the edges have been clean, deburred, polished, and they are nicely finished. Now, when I'm spending hundred plus dollars of my money, this is the level of quality that I expect. This is a vacuum formed holster. It's not press fit where they just get foam and jam it together until the Kydex cools. You can generally tell that by the level of detail and the lines and where the uh, retention is. Solid setup here. Speaking about the rest of the hardware on here, you can see they've used mostly screw fasteners, which you do need a Loctite. Uh, they do have a couple of those, you know, eyelet rivets like that, but they are the high quality ones. Some companies use very cheap versions of that. I like the mostly screw fasteners because they can be locked tight in place and they last a very long time. You do have a level of retention right here for adjustment on uh, your magazine side. 
then you also have a level of adjustment right here on the pistol side. So you can adjust that to your needs and your desires. You can also tighten, untighten this. You can take this off. You can replace it with whatever you want when it goes bad. Or you can take it off and just run this um, as a single setup. Totally up to you. It's basically kind of two for one. Now the claw over here is the modular style claw on it. You've got two sizes of this, this being a larger one. That's the one I prefer. It does very nice because this is where your belt's going to be, rides in nice and tight. You'll also see a different style clip on this one than some others. These aren't the plastic or polymer based ones. These ones on here, they are metal. They have a very nice underhook right there that you can see. Trying to get you the best light I can right there. And they do very well. Now these are extremely tight to the holsters compared to some of those other polymer based ones. And I kind of looked at them and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, and then very, very close to the holster, as you can see, get you the best light I can right here on that edge, right here, you'll see super tight. This makes it a more compact package. Now, initially I was thinking, ah, metal clips, but I can tell you they actually function, they fit well. And it's a little bit tighter than some of the other polymer ones out there. So that was definitely a plus for this thing. So let's go ahead and talk about the difference in the quality and where I think this fits with all of the others out there on the market that are in that, you know, $100 to $130 price rang, which is like the T1C, the Gerber, McKinetech, TXC, and some of those other ones. So as you guys can tell, I definitely am a fan of that orange and I really do like that cryptic pattern, which looks absolutely sick on your holster. Now let's talk about that quality in comparison to some of those other big names out there, the Gerbers, the TXC, the T1C, even that McKinetech, which is a quite more budget friendly holster than say, even this Ronin right here. But first to give you guys a really quick idea of how many holsters I've tried and tested and this only being part of them, this right here Ugh, is my tree of holsters that I did a video on how to make something to store holsters. Now these are just the ones that I've kept. I have an entire drawer of other ones that are in a crate out in the garage, even some here in the closet that I've either owned, gone through, purchased, or been sent in for testing. And there is a massive difference in fit, quality, finish work, and all that stuff. And of course, price between all of those other ones. So as for the quality and the fit and finish of this Ronin 3.0, this thing definitely fits in the quality level of the TXC, the Gerber, uh, the T1C, in that 100 to like 130 price range, depending on options. Now, if you start getting crazy colors like this and doing weird things, the holster prices go up. And generally, if you get the black on black options, you're gonna have the most value friendly one there. Now, there are definitely more budget friendly options out there than the Ronin or some of those other big name brands that I've brought up. One of those being McKinetech. McKinetech is quite a bit cheaper, but you are not going to have that perfect fit and finish work as this one. Now, is it still a very carryable holster? Is it gonna do its job? Yes. Will it have the nice retention features of say this one where it's a little bit more firm a little bit more lockable. No, it's a different style of holster. But budgetary concerns always come into play. One, we're buying something, and then we're buying something else, which could be anywhere from 70 to 130, 140 bucks, depending on the options you choose, just to carry what we purchase day in and day out. Now, what I can say is at this price range, this quality is definitely exactly what I would expect. And like I said, it really fits in that group of those kind of higher end holsters, the T1Cs, the Gerbers, the TXCs, this LAS concealment is definitely a contender in there and it is good to go. Now, depending on the options you want, like I said, you could spend 100 and I think 20-ish is what this one was, 129 for all black. And then once you start adding those crazy colors and patterns, we all know the price goes north. Either way, I really hope you guys liked learning about this Ronin 3.0, seeing it, and then obviously, if you're interested in that big kind of showdown video that I did, I will leave that link in the description. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button, turn the bell notification icons on. If you like this video and the content, give the video a like. Definitely leave me a comment down below on what your chosen holster uh, company is and why. You guys get out there and enjoy some quality range time with a plant. Even though I know ammo has been expensive and tough to get your hands on recently, Seek out some solid training in your area if you're new to the 2A community especially. You guys stay safe, stay ready most of all, stay dangerous, and I will see you guys on the next one.